All right, I'll start off and take your questions. Which were uh, Marcus Coleman able to go any to that he's even out there? You were only out there for how many periods? <laughs> you can do something about that. Huh? Uh, Marcus was out there and did what he needed to do, and then the rest was, you know, getting the rehabilitation that he needs. Uh, Coleman rehabbed the entire practice, so uh, I think Marcus right now is is a little bit ahead of Coleman in terms of availability. Uh, we fully anticipate Marcus going through full practice tomorrow. Coleman will have to wait and see how it goes. Uh, you know, tonight's rehab and then into tomorrow. But Justin, thought he was out there. Is you're fully anticipating him to be ready. Making progress. We'll see how it goes. Uh, you know, again, just like everyone, uh, he was out there for practice, but, you know, we'll see. Have you noticed much difference in Alabama just playing at home and on the road? And, you know, with the sellout announced, what can the crowd do to kind of affect them? Well, again, I think our crowd has been a great, has provided a great home field advantage for us. Uh, 102, 455, our student body, everyone's been great. Uh, the third down, everything. I think it's just creating that atmosphere. Uh, <clears throat> you know, obviously third down and just continuing to do what they that they have been able to do to impact the game. But in the case that Marcus and or Coleman can't play, how, what kind of response have you seen from some of the other guys this week? And what has been your message to them? Message is prepare yourself. Everyone has to be, pre be prepared and ready to play. And I see a hunger, I see an excitement, but again, we'll know a little bit more uh, tomorrow. But, you know, business as usual with video study and practice. Which do you think the grind is starting to get to the players or maybe the lack of wins? Because the guys didn't really seem like themselves today. I thought we had probably the best Tuesday practice we've had in a very long time. Uh, we finished strong. Uh, Tuesday's a workmanlike mentality. A lot of the individuals don't even show up till two o'clock in the afternoon from long day of classes. But I thought, I thought the attention, I thought the uh, the small details of improvement. Uh, I thought it was one of the better Tuesday practices we've had. What about the enthusiasm level? It seems very different from the first day of Florida week. Uh, and again, you guys were out there for specialist and punt. The whole team don't get excited for punt, just the punt team. Uh, but again, I would tell you, I, I thought it was one of the best. We ended very spirited. And again, it, we want a workmanlike approach on Tuesday. And again, there's, there's so much that goes into it with the game plan, with the thinking process. We just want a workmanlike approach. But uh, I thought it was one of the better days. How have all the inter injuries affected the way that you manage practice? Well, it's something we've really started to take into consideration uh, a few weeks ago as the season progresses. And as we know, there's no secret, we don't have any depth in our football program yet. And so you have to be cognizant of what your players need. The GPS systems, our sports science department's a big part of that uh, as well. But again, we've kind of tapered back in certain areas. And again, it's a fine line between getting the reps that you need and also taking care of their bodies. But at the end of the day, it's really about quality repetitions. That's first and foremost. Are you able to do as much <clears throat> team stuff as you want to, or have you had to dial that back a little bit? Well, we've been more affected uh, is the scout team part of it, the develop, you know, the, the demo squads, the scout teams. So we've done more ones versus twos and twos versus ones, more NFL style formats, just because of the lack of depth and the quality reps. Again, we're facing a very, very, very good football team, another top five opponent. So again, you try to simulate game speed repetitions. So that's why we've gone more good on good and more twos versus ones to try to simulate more of a speed factor. Do you wish you had more depth? I mean, I mean, I know you wish you had more depth, but do you wish along the offensive front you would have been able to put those guys against your one defense a little bit more? Absolutely. Again, everything is creating game speed repetitions. Now we've used Chris Weathered a lot to try to simulate the speed off you know, off the corner, off the edge. But again, that's just a byproduct of, you know, building a program. And I anticipate year four, year five, year six of our program, we, should ha we shouldn't be having these conversations anymore. But right now, you know, that's the realities of building a football program uh, that again, 
building that depth, that competition, and it's really a byproduct of quality scout teams and having that quality scout team reps. As Jordan Williams talked about in the second half, maybe the defense tries to do too much, gets away from just do my job. How do you coach against that or how do you correct that other than just talking about well, it? We always talk about pressing all the time. And uh, you know, when you press or you have the anxiety, that's sometimes be your emergency break. And so, again, just do your job, focus on your job. And I think sometimes they want success so much that they try to do their job and somebody else's job, and that's when you get hurt. So again, just focus on the bullseye, focus on your eye discipline, but overall, just do your job, execute your assignment, and play great team defense. And also great team offense as well. Is it harder to keep that focus when it's a, a three and out and you're, you're not on the bench long before you're back out there trying to trying to get another three and out? I think it's human nature sometimes. Uh, you know, again, you want to win and you start to press. And again, just trust and do your job. With the billboards going up in the Nashville area, how, how big of a point of emphasis is that region that will continue to be going forward? Well, the mid-state area is a, a very a uh, very strong recruiting base for us, but the entire state of Tennessee is a very strong recruiting base for us. But again, you look at the individuals, particularly this this past year's recruiting class from the mid-state area, and they're all making an impact on our football team. And there's great high school coaches there, there's great players, and we want individuals that want the opportunity to represent their home state institution. And if they don't, we wish them well, but they're going to watch us win a lot of football games down the road. And again, it's there's something unique and special when you represent your home state institution. And, and it's something that brings value, not just for three, four, five years of your career, it brings a lifetime value. That's where the Vol for Life program comes in. That's where you leave your legacy. You know, you'll end up working in this state when you get your degree from the University of Tennessee, or you get your degree, but go play in the National Football League and come back, you're going to make Tennessee your home. And everyone knows who you are. You see the treatment that our former players get in this state, their relevance, the magnitude of being involved for life is very, very important to us. Is that your idea, Butch? Who came up with the billboard? A number of ideas, you know, a number of, of individuals working together to formulate <laughs> the idea and also a, a way to say thank you uh, to the many people, the teachers, the administrators, uh, other coaches that really had a hand in developing these young men, it, making them ready for the University of Tennessee. I know their families appreciate it as well and that's, that's one of the things of why you come to the University of Tennessee is little things like this but also to get our fan base excited to let them know how important Tennessee is for us as well. So the billboards are very symbolic of many things. You mentioned the GPS thing. Where did you get the idea for, the, for that? I know a lot of schools are doing that now. Right. Specifically how that has it helped you. It's part of our sports science department. And again, everything we do is about research and development, vision, and trying to be a better football program each day at a time. And the GPS systems is part of it is everything is about the overall player welfare and development. So to be able to monitor their, uh, you know, their uh, growth and development over a period of time, you get a little bit of information the first year, but really where the information proves to be beneficial is year two, year three, year four in their development because you're able to really monitor and track them over a long period of time. And is it all players and practices and games, or is it certain positions? Or? There's certain position groups. As we continue to expand that part of our program, more and more individuals will have those on. How has Derek Barnett been able to contribute as a freshman in a position where typically freshmen aren't strong enough yeah. to do that? We were just talking about Derek today, his level of maturity, both on and off the field. He's a very even keeled young man. Uh, I like his temperament. He's extremely competitive and he's very intelligent. And I think overall what has been the riding factor, I just think his overall maturity uh, as a football player, but also just as a person, keeping things in perspective. Very quiet, but that internal drive that he has, uh, he's very, very competitive. But Jalen kind of shrugged off his, his playing through 
change? Is that what you want to see from your running back to kind of be able to put through some of the small mix groups that are just kind of like? Yeah, the running back position is one of durability. All the great running backs in this game have tremendous durability, and you have to have mental toughness. And again, you're getting hit on every single snap whether it's in pass protection or running the football. So it takes a little bit different mindset to play that position, and Jalen has it. Which, is it hard to teach guys about the importance of a rivalry when it's been so lopsided over the past recent history? Well, I've spoken about we have to get back to making it relevant. Uh, but no, uh, particularly when 50% of your team is new, but they understand the Tennessee-Alabama rivalry. They, a lot of these individuals, we talk about the mid-state, they've grown up on this rivalry. They understand the magnitude uh, of this. Is This rivalry means so many things to so many people. Our former players, uh, our students, uh, everyone that's attended these institutions, there's a pride involved with it. I believe it's one of the best rivalries in all of college football. It didn't take me very long to figure that out. So in terms of the importance to us, it'll always be there. But uh, everything, too, is educating the players also on the importance of the rivalry as well, and we do that. Okay, thank you.